How many of you can turn your lights on and off simply by turning your oven knobs? Well, that's what a lost neutral can do to you. Hi, this is Mike with Morgan Inspection Services. In this video, I'm going to talk to you about lost neutrals. I'm going to use this light board to show you exactly what happens in the event of a lost neutral. And I'm also going to use some animations to help explain these things and make these concepts even more clear to you. I'll work through some calculations using wattage, current, voltage, and resistance to calculate exactly how much voltage you will have on each leg of an electrical system in the case of a loss neutral. If you know the power consumption of any device, you can use Ohm's law to calculate exactly how much voltage and resistance that uh, device consumes, and you'll be able to calculate the voltages that you're going to have on these legs. First, let's talk briefly about what a loss neutral is. A loss neutral occurs when the neutral connection between the utility and the home's electrical panel is lost uh, by somehow becoming disconnected. Now, if the neutral is lost somewhere inside the home, maybe in a branch circuit, then that's a completely different situation. We typically call that a disconnected or an open neutral, and that is not near as serious as a lost neutral. A uh, lost neutral can occur during a, a windstorm. Uh, the wind Maybe it knocks over a tree or breaks a large tree limb, which falls on the electrical wires, pulls the neutral wire loose. Maybe corrosion over time eats through that neutral connection at the weather head and uh, causes a lost neutral. Maybe it's just caused by poor workmanship, uh, poor installation. So there are various things that can cause a lost neutral. And when a lost neutral happens, it's a very serious situation because you'll have high voltages on some of the electrical equipment in the home which can cause some serious damage and you'll also have high voltages on potentially high voltages on your neutral wires which can be a danger to people in the house so to better understand this let's look at how a typical residential electrical system works just before the electricity comes to the home it's stepped down at a transformer to 240 volts in the center of this transformer is where the neutral wire is connected. This neutral wire splits the 240 volts into two separate 120 volt phases. The two phases of electricity are 180 degrees out of phase. In this diagram, you can see on the upper one as the voltage or current is going up, the voltage current on the bottom one is going down. So the two graphs showing the voltages are basically mirror images or opposites of each other. The neutral wire in the middle of the transformer kind of acts like the anchor point of the electrical system. Okay, so let's put some loads on this electrical system. I've set this diagram up to look just like my light board with three lights on each leg or phase of the diagram. The three lights on each leg are in parallel with each other, which means that they're all at the same voltage. To make this a little easier to see, I'm going to rotate these lights and you can see that they're definitely in parallel. This is the exact same circuit with the lights simply rotated vertically instead of horizontally. These arrows show how the electricity flows. Now let's put the electricity in motion. Obviously this is not completely accurate because electricity cycles back and forth, but this animation does show the electricity flowing from the transformer through the lights back around to the neutral wire and back to the transformer. And it does this on each of the two legs. One thing I'll interject right here is that when you have a completely balanced load on each leg, you actually will have no current on the neutral wire. Now let's look at this light board that I put together. This light board is the exact same circuit that I showed in the animation. You have two legs. Leg 1 is on the left and leg 2 is on the right. I've powered this light board by running a wire to my oven outlet in the kitchen so that I can have 240 volts to the board. I've set up these voltmeters so we can monitor the voltage on each leg and you can see that the voltage on each leg is about 122 volts. It doesn't matter if I turn off some of these lights since the loads are in parallel the voltage doesn't change. Regardless of how many lights or loads are turned on or off the voltage remains the same because the neutral wire acts as the anchor point and because all the loads on each leg are in parallel with each other. Here's the properly operating electrical system that we looked at before. Now watch what happens when we break the neutral. You can see that the instant the neutral is lost, electricity suddenly starts flowing from the transformer through leg one, then to both sets of loads, 
and then back to the other leg of the transformer. In other words, leg one and leg two are now in series with one another. The two loads are now operating in series where it flows to one leg, then to the other leg, and then back to the transformer. To simplify things, I'm going to show one side of the transformer at zero volts and the other side at 240 volts. Since voltage is just a relative thing, it doesn't matter where we sit the uh, zero point. Doing this will make some explanations and some calculations simpler. Now, let's look at this on my light board. Uh, I'm going to simulate the lost neutral by disconnecting this wire here. You can see the two neutrals for the two legs are still twisted together. But you no longer have the neutral that would theoretically go back to the transformer. Now, what I'm doing here is a little bit dangerous because I do have live exposed wires, so I'm definitely going to try to be careful. Okay, through the magic of video editing, you'll now see that my test rig has changed slightly. There's now a third meter that you didn't see before. This green meter is showing us the voltage on the neutral wire. So, on this test rig, we have the equivalent of a house with a lost neutral. At the current time, we have essentially balanced loads. We have three lights on the right side and three lights on the left side. If you look at the voltages, you'll see that we have about 126 volts on each side. So right now, this electric system seems to be working just like normal. But in reality, it is very far from normal. What we have is the electricity flowing on one hot leg up one side and then back down the neutral wire. And then when it gets to where the neutrals are tied together, where it should flow back to the transformer, there's no connection to the transformer. So instead, it flows over to the other side through the neutral, then through the lights, and then back down the hot leg to the transformer and out. So what we have now is a 240 volt circuit. And actually, in this case, we actually have a, about a 252 volt circuit, but it's all the same. And the two sets of three lights are now in series on this 252 volt circuit. If your home, or any house for that matter, has a lost neutral, then every load in that house will be just like these six light bulbs. Every appliance, every TV, refrigerator, computer, microwave, and lights will be part of this 252 or 240 volt circuit. In the rare instance where you have balanced loads on each leg or phase in a lost neutral situation, then things will run like normal. But what are the chances that you'll actually have balanced loads? Those chances are very slim. So now let's look at what happens when the loads are not balanced. Let's turn off this light and see what happens. Wow, look how bright these two lights are and look at how dim these three lights on the left are. Why is this? Because when you turn off one of the lights in the parallel circuit, the resistance actually goes up. Voltage is proportional to resistance and we'll look at a calculation here in a minute. So the side with fewer loads has more resistance and therefore more voltage. Look at these meters. You can see on this side you have 73 volts and on this side you have 179 volts. That's still a total of just over 252 volts but it's no longer split equally between the two sides because the neutral or the anchor is gone and every time something else is turned on or off anywhere in the home the voltage will change again. And look at the voltage on the neutral wires, 53 volts. What is the voltage on the neutral wire supposed to be? Obviously, a properly operating system has zero volts on the neutral. Having this voltage on the neutral can uh, create a very dangerous situation. Where do these neutral wires go? They go to the neutral or grounding bus in the electric panel. And you have ground wires connected to that bus. So you can potentially have this high voltage on your ground wires, which can end up on the frame or the body of an appliance, such as a washing machine or refrigerator. How dangerous is that? Okay, before I show a couple of calculations, let's turn off one more light. Wow, now look at the voltages. You have 218 volts and 33 volts. Uh, before I go any further, I'm afraid one of these bulbs might explode, so let me turn these lights back on. How many things in your house do you think can withstand running on 218 volts for very long? Now fortunately some electronics are designed to run at either 120 volts or 240 volts because they're made to operate in various countries. But I believe most items that are designed for 120 volts would 
be destroyed or fried very quickly at these high voltages. So lost neutrals can cause serious problems to electrical devices in your home. Okay, now let me draw your attention to the green meter. Look at that. You have almost 94 volts on your neutral system. Why is that? Because the neutral connection back to the transformer is lost. Now the neutral system inside the home is simply the point that splits the two legs or phases. Now let's go back to the animation and take a look at it. This area that I just circled is where we now are measuring the voltage of 94 volts. Every neutral wire in the house will be at this voltage. I've already mentioned how the neutral wire and the ground wires are normally connected at the bus bar in the electric panel. So if you've got 94 volts on the ground wire, you've got 94 volts on the ground slot. Here's a simplified diagram of a, an electric panel. You've got the neutral and ground wires connected to the bus, and then the other end of the wire goes to an electrical outlet. So if you've got 94 volts on that neutral wire at this slot that I've, I've got circled, you've also got 94 volts on the ground slot. And if you've got something plugged into that, then that the body of that thing, let's say a washing machine, can also potentially be at 94 volts. So lost neutrals are not only dangerous to equipment in the home, but they can potentially be dangerous to people. Let me tell you an interesting fact here about the neutral voltage. If you take the difference between the two voltages on the two legs, and then you divide that by two, it'll tell you what the voltage on your neutral system or neutral wire will be. So let's look at the example from the video. We had voltages of 218 and 33. If you take the difference between these two and half it, we get 92 and a half volts. Uh, the video actually showed 93.6 volts on the neutral. So you can see that our calculation is quite close. Based on this formula, you'll see that the greater the difference in the two voltages, the greater voltage you'll have on your neutral wires. So far I've shown you how the voltages can change so drastically when loads are turned on or off. And you can have voltages in excess of 200 volts on certain equipment in your home. Voltage that can damage it or fry it completely. You can have voltage on the neutral and ground wires which can cause an electrocution. So a lost neutral is a very dangerous thing. So how do you know when you have a lost neutral? What indications do you look for? The main indication is lights burning dimmer or brighter than normal. Lights that get dimmer or brighter as other equipment is turned on or off. If a fan or other piece of equipment seems to be running a lot faster or more sluggish than normal, you might have a lost neutral. So if you suspect a lost neutral, you should immediately call an electrician or your electric company. If you feel quite confident that you've got a lost neutral, it's probably even worth turning off the main breaker and killing the power to your house until somebody gets out there to check it out. Now I'm going to take you briefly through some calculations showing you how the voltages on each leg can be calculated. Uh, let me start off by telling you that I complicated things a little bit when I purchased the light uh, bulbs for my light board. I unintentionally bought one package of 25 watt bulbs and another package of 40 watt bulbs. And I didn't realize this until I had made the video showing the voltages. And when I couldn't get the calculations to work out, I started investigating and that's when I discovered that I had two different wattages of bulbs on my light board. Anyway, so here we go. So on one side we have three 25 watt bulbs for a total of 75 watts. And on the other side we have three 40 watt bulbs for a total of 120 watts. Using the equation uh, power is equal to voltage times current, we can rearrange and calculate currents of 0.625 amps on one leg and uh, one amp on the other leg. Again, I'm not going to spend a lot of time on this. I'm just going to walk through it real quickly and if you want to go through the calculations you can pause the video and uh, do those. Next, we can use the currents and Ohm's law to calculate resistance. Now, I realize that resistance may not be the correct word since we're dealing with AC circuits, but whether we want to call it resistance, impedance, or whatever, we're talking about the same thing, and Ohm's law still applies. So doing this, we get 192 ohms on one leg and 120 ohms on leg two. Just keep in mind that these resistances is the combined resistance of the three bulbs to, uh, working together in parallel. So when we have loads in parallel, just remember that the combined resistance of the loads in parallel will always be lower than the resistance of any one load. 
we can calculate the resistance of each bulb at 576 ohms for the 40 watt bulbs and 360 ohms for the 25 watt bulbs. Using this information, we'll calculate the resistance of each leg with one bulb turned off on leg one. That would be one of the 25 watt bulbs. So now the resistance on leg one is uh, 288 ohms. The resistance goes up as bulbs are turned off because now the current doesn't have as many paths to flow through. Remember, with the loss neutral, we have a series circuit. So every part of the circuit has the same amount of current flowing through it. And the voltage across each set of loads will be proportional to the resistance of those loads or of that leg. Also, to simplify things, I've changed from the convention of negative 120 volts and positive 120 volts, and I'm just showing it as 0 volts on one side and 251 volts on the other side. Where does the 251 volts come from? Well, it comes from the actual voltage on the light board when I had one bulb turned off. If you add up those two voltages, they add up to 251 volts, so this will allow us to do a comparison. So the resistance is 408 ohms. Using this, we can proportionally calculate the voltages. On leg one, we get 177.2 volts. And on leg two, we get 73.8 volts. Now, let's go back to the video and see what the actual voltages were. It's changing just a little bit, but I'll say we have 178.4 and 73 volts. So the calculated voltages do indeed match very closely with the voltages that we actually measured in real life. And again, we have 53 volts on the neutral wire. Before we close, let's take one last look at what happened when there's even a bigger difference between the two legs. When we have two light bulbs turned off. With two bulbs turned off, we had 218 volts on one side and almost 33 volts on the other side. And we had almost 94 volts on the neutral wire. So through these calculations, these videos, these animations, you've seen just how serious of a situation a lost neutral can be. I hope this video has helped you to have a better understanding of how a lost neutral can affect a home's electrical system and why it does what it does. I hope you understand some of the indications to look for and what to do if you suspect a lost neutral in your home. I certainly appreciate you watching this video. If you liked it, I hope you will like it. I'll see you on the next video. Thanks again.